morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Souls and welcome back to your detailed forecast update for November 29, 2024. Happy Friday. We've got plenty to cover today, including heavy rainfall still expected across New South Wales today and tomorrow. We've also got some heavy falls expected across Queensland today, tomorrow and into Sunday. Far north Queensland going to get drenched with some healthy rainfall up there. We'll touch on the Northern Territory and Western Australia as well, just with a general weather forecast there before heading out and taking a peek at Tropical Cyclone Robin. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, lots to get through today. Okay and the sport lately has been much appreciated, but let's get stuck straight into things over in New South Wales and Queensland. Plenty of new tools as well on Windy today to get through as well, and I would, I'm very excited to show you a lot of them. We've got some heavy falls right now just over the last couple of minutes uh, across parts of New South Wales, especially into the interior parts, and we have had some very heavy rainfall accumulations. That can, I mean, you can see here at Coonabarabran, uh, uh, 55 millimetres in the last 24 hours, and then some good falls also expected to continue to occur, Moree, or just outside of Moree and Arabri, 22 millimetres, and some other locations that have been picking up uh, rainfall between sort of the 5 and 25 millimeter mark with like I said much more now on the cards as well. So throughout the course of today we will see those showers and the storms at times intensify later on this afternoon and evening you can see them really do pick up at around sort of around uh, 4 or 5 p.m local time. Uh, a couple of storms are expected to be embedded with the rainfall here but for the most part it is just expected to be light to moderate showers with some embedded heavier falls and thunderstorms. We'll see a much more widespread expanse of thunderstorms into the western half of New South Wales around Broken Hill extending up towards Tibabura and then also out towards Monaring. We'll also see a few thunderstorms around the Albury, Griffith and uh, Parks kind of area or Wagga Wagga sort of area. We'll see a couple of uh, thunderstorms down there so it'll be interesting to see how they pan out for the day and also a few storms expected into the uh, South Australian area as well north of uh, Port Augusta and Adelaide. Now these storms here not expected to be severe at all. The rainfall as well expected to pick up slowly as the evening goes on but some of these locations reaching its heaviest at around midnight tonight before it gets even heavier into uh, early Saturday morning, you can see it here. With the expected passage or the formation of a low pressure system somewhere over Victoria, this kind of storm system, if you'd like, which is going to turn into a bit of an uh, extra tropical front, is going to sweep across New South Wales and bring those heavy bands of rainfall with it. I mean, you can see that heavy band of rainfall extending between Berowina right down to Albury, right through the heart of New South Wales here. I wouldn't exactly call this the central part of New South Wales. I'd kind of call this more into the foothills section of the Blue Mountains. The rainfall picking up as the day goes on for locations further towards the east, I think Dubbo, uh, Parks, Young, Wagga Wagga, Albury, those locations they'll be inundated with rainfall at around 10 or 11 o'clock tomorrow morning and then by about midday for Canberra and then a little bit later on as you get further across the ranges. Expecting some rain for Newcastle, Sydney and Wollongong most likely later on in the afternoon at around 4 or 5 p.m. It could be heavy at times there as well, especially between Wollongong and Oladola and some heavy falls also, also expected into the southeastern corner of New South Wales. Now it is quite rare that we see rainfall at least on this forecast model to be this intense here and normally it's just kind of that green and yellow color you've been familiar with it if you've stuck around to the channel for quite a while so this is really heavy rainfall that we're seeing on the forecast right now kind of indicative of severe thunderstorms however we're not seeing any thunderstorms on the forecast here so what this tells me is that rainfall accumulations are going to be very uh, very quick they're going to be very quick to happen we're going to see some intense precipitation at times especially into places that typically receive intense precip precipitation into mountain valleys or around mountains mountain faces uh, and also just in the mountains in general, some higher levels of rainfall are also expected. Steady rainfall also expected as you get further out as well. Dubbo Parks, Wagga Wagga and Ulri, like I said, expecting steady rainfall for the majority of uh, Saturday and as such, those rainfall accumulations will quite quickly pile on. Now, a bit of a wild card, at least into Saturday morning, Cobar could see some good rainfall, same with Burke as well, but they're kind of on the edge of where this rainfall is kind of expected to develop here. I'd be surprised if Cobar didn't pick up 15 millimetres, but Burke, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't pick up any rainfall. Unfortunately, they do desperately need it as well. It seems to be all of those uh, how it's been happening this year. The places that desperately need the rainfall completely miss out and the places completely surrounding it on pretty much four sides get all of the rainfall that they were supposed to get. Same deal with Griffith, Hillston and Hay. Yes, they will get some decent rainfall, especially Friday uh, night into early Saturday morning or not decent rainfall, but they will still get a couple of drops of rainfall. But the good rainfall is going to happen further towards the east around West Wyalong, Wagga Wagga, Orana and uh, Albury and then into uh, Victoria, Shepparton, Bendigo, Ballarat, Ararat they're expecting some good rainfall as well. Melbourne, not so much, but still, uh, it does look like the rainfall is going to 
uh, be more kind of east, uh, more kind of west dominant rather. So the further west you go, the higher the chance of you uh, picking up some decent rainfall. Unfortunately, that is in stark contrast to what is actually needed. The rainfall is needed into the eastern part of New South Wales, but again, that's just how these weather systems seem to pan out. Into the northeast of the state as well. Tomorrow, expecting some heavy rainfall around the Narrabri and Tamworth area. Also, some light to moderate rainfall expected around Glen, uh, Glen Innes, Inverell, and Armadale. And then into the northeast of the state as well. Late into Saturday night, we'll likely see some heavy showers into the southeast of Queensland. Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales. Nothing crazy here, and I will get to this in just a few minutes because southeastern Queensland is a place that I want to talk about for quite a while. Uh, in terms of rainfall accumulations, and like I said, all new map here going out for the 14 day forecast finally, so this is just fantastic to see. But over the next uh, 24 or just beyond kind of the next 36 hours, including today and tomorrow, the rainfall that we're expecting from now on until this rainfall event clears out of New South Wales is heavy, especially around the Dublin Parks area, and we've been talking about these places for the last couple of days has been kind of the hot zone for the rainfall. Anywhere between 50 and 120 millimetres of rain possible. I'd say tomorrow for Dubbo, at least till about lunchtime, rainfall accumulations should amount into those triple figures, or at least for areas around Dubbo, rainfall should be above 100 millimetres there. We'll get Lightning Ridge uh, around sort of that uh, 30 to 60 millimetre um, uh, um, <laughs> mark, I guess. I'm really stumbling on my words there. Burke, I'm expecting around 20 millimetres. The majority of that should come from storms throughout the course of today. Cobar around 30 millimetres meters like I said today and tomorrow the rainfall expected there. Hillston, Griffith and Hay not expecting too much in the way of rainfall. Still a couple of drops possible there. West Wylong is where the rainfall is going to start. 50 millimeters there on this forecast. Wagga Wagga as well around 50 millimeters and then heavier accumulations into the Capital Territory. Canberra could be seeing up towards 60 or 70 millimeters from heavy falls expected tomorrow mid-morning into the early afternoon. Bathurst, Orange and Lithgow as well also expecting some decent falls from this. Sydney, Wollongong and just the Sydney metro area as a whole. The further west you get the heavier the rainfall will be and the further south you get, the heavier the rainfall will be as well, but I think rainfall accumulations of Sydney should be around the board of below 50 millimetres. I'd be surprised if they picked up any more than that, and again, that's not flooding rainfall and nothing of concern there. I spent plenty of time talking about New South Wales. So let's shift focus slightly and talk about the southeast and the south central parts of Queensland. They do have some good rainfall as well on the cards, not just from this weather event. I mean, you can see it here extending through parts of south central Queensland throughout the course of today and into early tomorrow morning. But I would actually like to talk about what's expected to pipe up Saturday evening and into Sunday morning. We've had a couple of days to kind of stew on this here, and I've had a pretty good idea of what's actually expected to come in for the first day of December. So we will likely see some heavy falls throughout the course of Saturday night into early Sunday morning. And then we're also going to see a line of heavy rainfall somewhere developed throughout Sunday, uh, most likely from thunderstorms further inland. In fact, we will see a bit of an outbreak of potentially severe thunderstorms into the southeast of Queensland to welcome in December. And then, like I said, we're likely to see late Sunday night a bit of a line of showers or the odd storm streaming in somewhere along the Sunshine Coast or the Gold Coast. It has kind of been canned from this forecast here, but just taking a look at the heavy stuff that's lingering offshore, there's kind of just a pre-warning that we could be seeing some heavy rainfall after the storms on Sunday. But in terms of those storms on Sunday, just taking a look at the current conditions expected for them in terms of available energy for them. There's plenty of it in the atmosphere. We could definitely see some severe uh, thunderstorms out of this. Humidity through the roof temperatures as well are going to be quite warm across the southeastern parts of Queensland up into the high 20s or early 30s, depending on whereabouts you are and what time of the day it is. But yes, yeah, certainly some good storms possible around the southeastern corner of Queensland throughout sun uh, uh, Sunday, especially into the afternoon hours, firing up from around 2 or 3 p.m. Uh, I reckon the hot zones are going to be outside of Brisbane or outside of the Brisbane metro area further towards the northwest, uh, also along the Sunshine Coast outside of Maroochydore, definitely a hot zone for thunderstorms, and then another hot zone into the northeastern corner of New South Wales. Some good stuff happening on a Sunday. Gold Coast likely to see a couple of storms here and there, but I wouldn't get your hopes up for anything too severe. We could see a couple of heavy showers move through later on in the night, but again, in terms of severe thunderstorms, it doesn't look all that likely at this time. And then good storms extending further up the Sunshine Coast, up towards Mount Perry, and even outside of Gladstone and Agnes Water, some good thunderstorms also expected there. Uh, interesting stuff on this forecast here. We haven't really seen them uh, consistently fire up on this forecast for Gladstone, Agnes Water, Miriam Vale or Bundaberg over the last couple of days, but it does look like Sunday now you're going to get some good storms uh, for Bundaberg, Gladstone, and even up towards Rockhampton and Ogmore as well. A couple of good thunderstorms expected throughout the course of Sunday, so that would be fantastic to see indeed, and I bet they're really hanging out for a couple of good storms there, especially on the rainfall uh, perspective. They do desperately need that rainfall. From today right out to Monday, so just over this next four-day forecast, considering those thunderstorms on Sunday, 
Sunday will likely spill over into a bit of rainfall Monday morning. We've got some good falls expected around the Ogmore area, the majority of that from thunderstorms up towards 50 or 60 millimetres. Brockhampton expecting around 30 millimetres. Same for Gladstone, Bundaberg slightly less at around 25 millimetres. Better falls along the Sunshine Coast there. You can see Harvey Bay looking at around 30 millimetres and then the Sunshine Coast in general from showers uh, on Friday, Saturday and then in, from storms on Sunday around sort of that 50 to 60 millimetre mark and then into the southeastern corner of Queensland. The majority of this coming through from storms on Sunday up towards 80 or 90 millimetres being really widespread here which tells me that the risk from these thunderstorms is not so much going to be the large hailstones or damaging winds. It's going to be because they're slow moving and they're going to dump some incredible rainfall accumulations across some locations in a very quick period of time. And you can see here along the um, uh, border here of the, uh, Queensland and New South Wales outside of Wundamong and Boona, rainfall accumulations exceeding 100 millimetres. Very wet indeed. And like I said, the majority of that coming through from a little bit of rainfall expected tomorrow night. You can see here some heavy falls possible here and there. And then again from thunderstorms expected Sunday morning and then into later Sunday afternoon and evening. Interesting stuff and a lot of complex stuff for the southeastern corner of Queensland. If I've left you confused or if you've got any questions that I've left unanswered, then please let me know in the comment section down below. Now let's head up into North Queensland and across the central Queensland coastline as well. A lot of stuff to talk about, especially on Sunday. You guessed it, it's going to be a storm day, that's for sure. Showers and storms firing up pretty consistently throughout the course of today across interior parts of North Queensland, especially around Georgetown and Croydon. You can see a couple of gnarly thunderstorms expected to extend south towards Charters Towers and Matabara, and a couple of thunderstorms as well expected to kind of get close to the Atherton Tablelands, but they're going to be kept at bay by the mountains adjacent to Ravenshaw and Atherton. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like those thunderstorms are going to be uh, into the Atherton Tablelands tonight at all. Bit of an onshore flow expected to pipe up tomorrow as well that's going to drive the perfect conditions for thunderstorms across the central Queensland coastline between Townsville right down towards Ogmore and some gnarly stuff is expected tomorrow afternoon especially for inland uh, communities outside of Bowen so Ravenswood, Charters Towers, Yalbaru, Garget, Glendon, Mount Coolin some great thunderstorms expected there. Collinsville as well swamped by this thunderstorm on the forecast here. Of course things are very much subject, subject to change but you can see some really gnarly stuff is expected throughout the course of tomorrow from some of these thunderstorms here. Some very heavy falls look possible, that's for sure. And you can also see those thunderstorms expanding, extending further up the Queensland coastline. You can see some gnarly stuff expecting, uh, expected just offshore from the far northern Queensland coastline. That hasn't been picked up by this forecast model here, but a few heavy showers look possible. And just on this forecast model, I mean, you can see the rainfall accumulations that are expected just here. Very heavy stuff from this uh, forecast. And of course, this is a convective model, so stuff is going to be very, very wrong indeed. But it gives you an idea of where the heavy falls are expected across northern Queensland. Interesting stuff indeed and something that I'm planning on using in future forecast updates. But back to the regular forecast model, let's take a look at Sunday. You can see heavy showers expected to start the day off adjacent to the coastline between Cardwell and Bowen. Townsville could get a couple of good drops there and some storms expected throughout the course of Sunday morning as well, further inland out towards Georgetown and Croydon before they fire up in dramatic fashion Sunday afternoon around the Atherton table and swarming uh, Atherton, Ravenshoe down towards Cardwell and Ingham as well. Some heavy falls expected there. These thunderstorms look to be high precipitation storm modes, so they're going to be very slow moving. They're not going to be moving in any particular direction either, and they could go severe worn for hours at a time. So some very heavy falls do look possible, especially into the right mountain valleys. Out towards Chilago and uh, Mount Carbine as well, some good thunderstorms expected out there. Laura expecting a couple of good thunderstorms, but the communities along the coastline between Port Douglas, Woodgill, Woodgill, and Cooktown, they're unlikely to receive significant rainfall accumulations. Unfortunately, those thunderstorms are just going to be too far inland, and they continue right throughout the night as well. Storms also expected to continue into early Monday morning with some heavy showers expected there. More thunderstorms expected to have a bit of an outbreak on Monday, but it will be concentrated further towards the north outside of the uh, Daintree Rainforest. Ravenson and Atherton could still see some good storms on Monday, but again, they don't look awfully likely. A couple more storms expected on Tuesday. They'll be less gnarly or less severe than they are on both Sunday and Monday. Again, just kind of on that steady weakening trend. And then showers expected to swarm the far northern Queensland coastline throughout Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Plenty of showers expected. Plenty of rainfall also possible right out towards Friday and Saturday from an onshore flow that's expected to pipe up. So let's get on to those rainfall accumulations right now. It just looks really showery and stormy and quite wet across the northern parts of Queensland in general throughout the remainder of this week. So just from thunderstorms alone throughout the uh, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday kind of time frame, I would just like to kind of uh, individualize Sunday, Monday and Tuesday with the thunderstorm rainfall here because that is kind of the most important rainfall and the most important prediction that we have to make. Atherton and Ravenshoe expecting between 70 and 80 millimeters. 
and 30 millimeters on Sunday, 20 millimeters on Monday, and 20 millimeters on Tuesday, which looks completely possible from these thunderstorms. That completely justifies that number there. So again, I think a very good forecast and a very easy say on how much rainfall is expected for Atherton and Raven. So up to 100 millimeters, and don't be surprised if you pick up more, at least 50 millimeters as well. I don't see any less than 50 millimeters falling up there. So again, very welcome rainfall. In this valley and Tully also expecting some good rainfall, well in excess of 100 millimeters from showers uh, that are going to continue through next week. And then accumulations between 25 and 50 millimeters expected right up the Cape York Peninsula throughout pretty much the majority of the Cape York Peninsula, actually. And some good falls also expected to add to that throughout the course of today. In fact, you can see outside of Charters Towers from thunderstorms that are expected to be quite gnarly indeed tonight into tomorrow night. Accumulations of at least 100 millimeters look possible there, which is, again, fantastic to see. Much needed rainfall for those locations. So really, really good to see. And I imagine a lot of people very, very happy with that indeed. In terms of the 14-day rainfall accumulations as well, they're really starting to build now for the far north of Queensland. I mean, take a look at this adjacent to the coastline accumulations in excess of 200 millimetres. I think the last time we saw this on a forecast was in, I believe, June or July. So it's been a good couple of months now. It's been a long wait for this rainfall. And it really is beginning to pipe up just with steady showers expected throughout the course of next week. This rainfall is going to make herself felt across the northern parts of Queensland. And there's so much else to talk about as well across Queensland just in terms of showers and thunderstorms. This video would be an hour long if I made it. Uh, about everything that's expected over the next 14 days in Queensland. So we're going to move swiftly out of Queensland now. I'll give more detailed forecast updates on it throughout the course of this week and head into the Northern Territory and Western Australia. Uh, just for a general weather forecast here, I'm not going to go too far into detail. You can see a couple of storms expected tonight and into tomorrow night into the northern parts of the wheat belt. Also outside of the Perth area, we could see a couple of showers late Saturday night into early Sunday morning from mid of a cold front that's expected to steam through. The chance of showers is pretty minimal at this time. Then storms expected right throughout next week across the Kimberley region of Western Australia. You can see those storms extending further south across parts of the Pilbara region and then into the Gascoyne throughout Monday and Tuesday into next fortnight into the second week of December. And you can see those showers here being pretty widespread throughout interior parts of Western Australia right through the early parts of next week. So it'll be interesting to see what happens throughout the course of the first couple of weeks of December. It certainly looks like WA is heading into a wet period. And the chance of that tropical low that we talked about very briefly in yesterday's uh, video, it doesn't look like it's there right now. So again, we will have to wait and see what is actually expected here. But again, some interesting stuff for Western Australia. It's certainly a lot to keep us occupied. And just to wrap this video up, we'll keep it over in Western Australia. But Tropical Cyclone Robin formed yesterday at around 4 p.m. my time, 7 p.m. Australian East standard time. It got to category two tropical cyclone status. I think it'd be a bit of a stretch to call this convective mess a category two strength tropical cyclone at this time. Yeah, Robin is really, really struggling in the fate of some high wind shear. And when I said high wind shear yesterday, I wasn't expecting her to be completely carved up for today's forecast update. But let's take a look at a satellite loop over the past 12 hours and see how she has been doing if it does care to load in. It looks like it's going to, or it's going to at least take its time. Um, in terms of the structure at peak intensity, which is probably right about now. You can see it's looking pretty flash indeed. Had some really good convection, certainly indicative of a category two strength tropical cyclone. Very interesting stuff, but yeah, certainly weakening now and it's going to be downgraded into an extra tropical low or a remnant low in the next couple of hours. I do imagine it's not category one status at this time. This system has been completely shredded and it's going to continue that perpetual weakening, strength, uh, weakening trend over the next few hours and then into the next few days when it will completely die off from cyclone status, hopefully later tonight or into early tomorrow morning. Of course, no threat to Western Australia at all. You'd hear every news agency. There'd be twice daily updates from this channel as well if it was a threat to Western Australia. But of course, no threat to Western Australia, no threat to the Australian continent either. So you don't have anything to worry about in terms of tropical cyclone stuff. And just to put your mind at ease, I've seen a few comments about cyclone stuff now in northern Queensland. Uh, just to put your mind at ease, if you are thinking that there's a tropical cyclone coming through in the early parts of December, there's nothing on the forecast here, nothing on any reasonable forecast that I can find either. Even in terms of tropical low stuff, Stuff. There could be something that forms into the really late parts of uh, the first week of December into the second week of December, actually closer towards Christmas than right now. But again, we will have to wait and see on this. It, it's a very hard sell, this forecast at this time. But yeah, nothing reasonable on the radar at all. So you've got literally nothing to worry about in northern Queensland on the tropical cyclone front. So I hope that's put your mind completely at ease. It's been a very long Australian weather update today. We've gotten through a lot of stuff, and if I have left anything unanswered, then please do let me know in the comments section down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. The support lately has been much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.